Oh, days, so. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Oh, it on. is here. Go. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome. Well, can we do David whatever? Frost would love it. Well, sorry, sorry, people. Old reference. Um, well, I'm it's old. the 27th <laughs> of February. It's the day after Everton got four points back for not playing the game of football. A record breaking day. The Premier League didn't reference it on their news feed yesterday that Everton became the first club ever to get given four points. Um, I'm st- I'll be honest. I game we didn't win at weekend. We could have said the first team ever to get seven points mm-hmm. in a week. Well, we got five points for the draw. Yeah, yeah which we referenced we yesterday. Have had seven in a week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is not possible normally. Um, I was happier yesterday than I am today. Why? Have you read the judgment? I've read bits of it, but I still, I still struggle with bits of it. <laughs> I, I struggle to see where the. Uh, a made up sanction has come being put in and they've taken six points from it. I, I struggle to see when part of it says Premier League points are more valuable than points in other leagues because of the monetary thing that they've still equated what we've done to two wins in the Premier League, mm. which I find it, but it, it is what it is, and that's fine. So now they're going to use six points every time someone goes over as a standard, so we all know. Well, we don't know that. Exactly, and this is why I'm not happy. That's what I'm saying. If they were, if now the Premier League said, you go over, it's six points. And then you can... Well, Our case will clearly yeah. become a reference point for future cases. Mm. See, I've got a feeling after this year, this will never be used again. I'm not saying Everton will be the only, because I think Forrest will get done as well. But I've, wrong I've got a feeling Everton and Forrest too, will become it? the only two that have ever done at this With level. deduction. Maybe not even a point deduction. Maybe it'd be like three points for breaching. So you all know where you are. I just don't know if they will... I don't know if everyone will be comfortable. Can I offer an opinion? But you can. Yeah, I'm just saying what I think will happen, but, but it could... Yeah, it could the Premier League, one hopes, mm. right, have learnt from this. <laughs> and the one thing that the EFL have, which the Premier League do not have... Mm is a method for determining what the sanction should be once you've determined the points deduction is the sanction, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. So if they're going to have on the statute, you may get a points deduction. They should say, and if you do, this is how it's calculated. Mm. Now, the new premi- um, if, um, UEFA rules, they have a nice little table that tells you if you breach by this, that's your punishment. If you breach by this, that's your punishment. They should just do something like that. So in your point, and it doesn't matter what the numbers yeah, are, yeah, yeah, yeah. you say, if you breach, and don't mm. forget, the 105 is the upper threshold. Yeah, of course, yeah. You breach once you go above 15, mm. right? And the lower threshold is the slap on the wrist type one, right? And obviously, the further you go up there, the more, if you will, um, special measures you go into. Mm. But once you're over at 105, you get referred to an independent commission. Mm. When it lands at the independent commission, everybody should know, uh-oh, Club X have been referred to the independent commission. So we know they're getting at least X points, mm. whether it's one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever it is, mm. right? And then if they're really naughty, they get more, mm. right? Now, clearly the EFL do it slightly different as they say, you get 12, but for being good, we start knocking them off. Mm. So it depends which way around you want to do it. Mm. Uh, but clearly, if you're going to impose the sanction after the first court case not after the last court case mm. right then shocking a premier league team with a minus 12 point deduction and then they go to appeal and it ends up as two points is crazy mm. right so they just need to be truly objective and i think what um this kc has done or helped is he's t- he's been quite critical i think mm. of the premier he has league. been very critical yeah he's tried to use as, as much references as he can some mm. of them are a bit spurious you know like you know Dynamo Moscow or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but bless them, poor Derby County get a reference because mm. they got taken to the cleaners they by did, the AFL, which is crazy, yeah. which was mad, and, and they're still recovering from it. Mm. But but what he has done is laid down some things which can become anchor points, and and the phrasing and stuff like that helps that. And he he, he uses phrases like a minimum of six points is appropriate. Mm. So so yes, a future judge surely, when faced with the breach of PSR i.e. next week, if that's where Nottingham Forest are going, will start with a view, if it's proven that they have breached PSR, you know, they take all the mitigations into effect and all those sorts of things, they're going to get at least six points. 
Yeah. And then you say, well, how much more can they get? Because that's a bit like phase one of what Richard Masters wanted, which seems quite punitive to me, but they've concluded it's just, the words are used. Um, but the maximum should be less than going into administration, mm. which is currently nine points. So my conclusion is Nottingham Forest, if they breach, will get, well, if they have breached, will get between six and eight points deducted. And if Everton have breached, they will also get between six and eight points deducted. Mm. Both of those potentially subject to mitigation. But what he has also said, this KC, yeah. you shouldn't double count. Mm. And of course, when we go in to court, whenever we're supposed to go into court on this thing, um, when the case for Nottingham Forest will already have been heard and announced, mm. so that then becomes a precedent for our case as well, mm. yeah, then we're going to go, well, hang on a minute, but haven't we already been punished for this? <laughs> and that's the removal of double counting, isn't it? Mm. So it'd be interesting if it's accepted at the next case for us that some of the numbers in this PSR can't be used because we've already been punished for them. Mm. I struggle to see why we're even having a, a court case at all. Yeah. Well, we've just been talking, haven't we, just before we come on? Yeah. About certain, um, certain numbers and if you do those numbers, it it doesn't add up because Everton, if it, but again, they will take that on. <laughs> Depends how much the next commission take that. If they take this fella and go, you know what, he was good and, you know, we, they've come up with the six points now, so he's kind of done our job for us. So we can go in and go, yeah, we agree with this fella. The six well, points. that's what will happen, yeah. Right? So if that's the case, then they should also take his his um, view view that Don't e double Everton have been done for two thirds of this anyway. Yes. So if we're going to give Everton any kind of points, if we are, then we either we are, we the thing we have to look at is right. Okay, we will still give Everton the six points. However, we can't punish them because they've already been punished for two of the years. Therefore, Everton gets two points taken off because it's a third of the punishment. Blah de blah. Yeah, yeah. If or, they get a sanction of two points, if they get a sanction, they get a sanction of two points. Or like what you were just saying, then if they accept that Everton have been punished for those two years then you're almost starting back at north. So therefore, Evan yeah, can get any. I, I've got two views on Evan this. Because Evan would have to have a, like you were saying, a hundred, he'd have yeah, to yeah. reach by crazy yeah. amounts I, I, You know, I, um, I have two views on this. Hmm? One is, is almost a question for the football club, isn't it? Which is, if the first two of the three years, we know what the, the PSR number is, hmm. because the judge has told us, hmm. it's 55 million and 10 million, that's 65 million. Yeah. We don't know what the third PSR number no, is, no, no. and the, the, even the, the statutory accounts haven't been published by Everton yet, so mm. that's a bit disappointing. But all of us can do the sums. 105 minus 65 equals 40. Mm. Therefore, we have a PSR number, allegedly, of 40. Mm. A loss of 40 under PSR. Mm. And therefore, that's why we've been referred. However, that referral surely came about before this judge made the view that you can't double count, mm. right? So if you can't use the minus 55 and the minus 10, because we've already been penalized against that, then our PSR threshold is still 105, but we've got no carry forward from previous years. So it's only the number for 2023 that actually counts. It's a bit like saying the PSR for 2023 is uh, 21, which is zero, plus 22, which is zero, because they've already been used, plus whatever 23 is. So mm. actually, if our losses in PSR terms, and they can't possibly be this, people, by the way, are more than 105 million, mm. then we're bang to rights. But yeah. if it's less than 105 million, isn't that no case to answer? Should be, yeah. Is um, it? Paul Joyce has just uh, treated and Everyone said, will have a view now. The double jeopardy factor is likely to be treated as major mitigation factor and it could mean Everton receive a deduction of one to three points on the next charge. So therefore two points like you said because that will be a third of the... because they've been done for two. But now what he's saying is we'll get 
um, three or five points. No, one to three. Everton will a get deduction a deduction of. The, 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 oh, you mean deduction? Everton will lose and oh, either one, pardon. one to three points from. Sorry, the we'll get another punishment of one to three yeah. points. Where my argument might be none. Mm -hmm. Because the only way, well, it's two ways around it, isn't it? Right? Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on. And I think a bit like I like the idea that it's just so much per five million, you know? Mm. Yeah, without, well, that's making more sense. Stuff, yeah. Yeah. Makes um, more smaller sense. breach, smaller punishment, right? And and this automatic six points thing still doesn't help someone who's just over, mm. does it? Because what we now know is, if you it, again, it, clearly one hopes it wouldn't happen, but just for, for illustration, if you're a penny over 105 million, you're going to get six points deducted. Mm. If you're 250 million over, you're going to get eight. Mm. Hello. But you know, said madness. That, John. You've said that. So all that is about common sense, isn't it? Mm. Right? But common sense also says that, and often the law doesn't work with common sense, mm -hmm. that if you've already been punished once, you don't apply the punishment and then discount it down, right? Mm -hmm. Because if we, and, and I know there's a moral bit here that says, yeah, but you have gone over. When, you, the, when the rules were started, if you were over 105 in any year, then you're going to get done. So, so it sounds to me that the difference between doing things right and doing the right thing, mm. doing the right thing is we should get a points deduction for this second charge. Mm. But it, in my view, and I, I'm interested now that Paul Joyce says one to three. I don't know why he thinks one, but my version of one would be you have to have a points deduction, therefore I'll give you the lowest points deduction I can give you, mm. and that is one. I think it'll be two, because I think... Well, two is... Has logic I think to it. They'll have some logic and just go because that's one third yeah. of, of what the punishment yeah, would have been. Done. Yeah, so you've been done. Um, so, so maybe he's just being cute because two mm. is in between one and three. Who knows? The fella who was uh, chasing City, um, but SLB, is, is it? Yeah, who's come Twitter, on and yeah. decided that he knows everything about Everton's books. He knows all the, the numbers in Everton's books. Apparently, all right, good man. I said Forrest will only get one to three points taken off them. Why? It's because they've only been in it for one year, so they'll only get. He doesn't read the rules then, does he? Let's see, look at Well, he's, a, he's clueless and he says he chased them for a reason. But a talk sport of giving me a time, I don't The 105 million threshold mm. is reduced by 22 million per year that you're not in the Premier League. So their threshold is 44 million less than 105. Okay. And if they've exceeded it, they get punished. Mm. And it will be seen as a significant breach if it's a, on or around or above what Everton have had. You can't have Everton breaching a rule by 20 million, someone else breaching it by bigger and getting a smaller punishment. You just can't have that. And I don't know why anyone would suggest it is. Well, if that was the case, then we'd have it out there pure and simply the Premier League want to relegate Everton. Um, that would be out there. I mean, even Andy Goldstein, who I've got, you know, I don't have any time for that radio station at all, but even he said... It's only two things. One, they're determined to relegate Everton, or two, they're incredibly stupid. I think they're the latter's. Possibly. La I actually think it's the, the, the first one. <laughs> they should be pleased that it's the first one, because that means they're not incredibly stupid. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, a, it's both. I think they are incredibly stupid, yeah. and they want to relegate Everton. They're making it up as they go along, mate, yeah. ultimately. And yeah. Dom King said that today, hasn't, mm -hmm. hasn't he? He's joined the, the, the crescendo of they're making it up as they go along. Mm -hmm. and, and because they've got they being the Premier League, have got themselves into this situation where, in the, you know, in, let's just accept for a moment, I know you have a different view, um, potentially, but let's just accept for a minute that they are independent, these mm. KCs. Yeah. And so they just apply law mm. and objectivity. And there's nothing in any, of the, particularly this appeal thing, there's nothing in there which would lead anyone to conclude that... Forest are going to get a smaller deduction simply because they weren't in the Premier League for the first two years. The mm. rules are the rules, and that's what they'll use. And, I mean, my view is, and yours is, and you've been banging on it, we all have, I think, points are wrong, and this is why it's wrong, because it's ultimately subjective, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The whistle <laughs> goes at the end of the game. If you've scored more t points that, and more goals than the other team, you win. Mm. But this isn't like that, nope. because when you go to an independent commission, it's a different group. Mm. Yeah, mm. it's different judge. He's got different insights. He's got different pre um, precedents. 
So, and the only precedent that the judge who does Nottingham Forest will have is what's just happened to Everton. Mm. And I'm telling you, I would not like to be anybody associated with a decision which resulted in, if, because we don't know yet, but if their breach is bigger and their punishment is not bigger, that's bad. If their punishment is smaller, hell to pay. There really will be. But with, in what way, though? Because I... Because... Everton have been, Evertonians have been trying to, you know, make their appeal known, their feelings known for three months. It hasn't done anything, has it? It's the Premier League. Because in paragraph 108 of the ruling, when the Premier League were pushed on this and trends and all that, they only wanted to give uh, Everton one point back. Yeah. One point back. Now, if that isn't the Premier League going after Everton, for, so they wanted it to equal administration, um, which is what you get for administration. So I think it's quite clear the Premier League's view of Everton Football Club, um, a club, you know, the same competition. They never justified it, did they? No, they haven't justified anything. None the, of it's justified. The same competition allowed Chelsea to spend six hundred million in a season and not breach. Um, the Premier League have shown, in my opinion. They don't. They only care about six clubs. The the board I'm talking about, because quite clearly there's twenty clubs in it. But the board, the chair masters, the chair, the chair boys, woman, yeah. all of them, they only care about the teams at the top. They know they're getting the big clubs. You mean? Yeah, not the small the big ones. Big clubs. Yeah, they're getting. We know the independent regulator is going to be passed in Parliament. It's I think Andy Byrne said it's either the end of this week or next week that'll get passed. So that's masters are on us here, thankfully, um, and no one should touch him with a barge pole. Um, and we'll see where we go from there. But they have, they want to take Everton down because we had a go at them over the Super League, mm. which is why they decided halfway through building a stadium that Everton couldn't use that process anymore. That they said was okay. Yeah, we couldn't include it anymore halfway through a build, which is absolutely insane. Um, and everything they've done since this, the the ownership decision. Again, I've seen it somewhere else. So that's twice two different journalists have referenced a maximum of 12 weeks for the football club to be notified whether or not it's likely to be passed. Everton haven't been told. It's 24 else. weeks on. Double yeah. the time. That's vindictive. Well, we did the round robin, didn't we? Mm. Um, I know I was the one who did it, but we did it for the channel. Mm. It must be two or three weeks now since we did that. Mm. And, and we asked each of the major players in this mm. oh uh, yeah 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 Premier League's view we don't talk about it yeah you know talk about anything yeah apparently Everton's view not to do with us because mm. it isn't because Everton in this sense are all employees yeah yeah right? yeah it's not to do it's with not them the football it's a, club, it's yeah. a sale by Farhad Mashiri mm. the Triple Seven Football Group yeah. and Triple Seven Football Group said um helpfully mm. whether you believe them or not but why lie that they had been told by the Premier League it would be mid to late February. Mm. Well, late February is We're right two upon days us. Left, yeah. Is right upon us. Um, and then the Premier League last week didn't they ask Triple Seven more questions? Mm. <clears throat> and I was speaking to someone uh, coming in. Is here. that being confirmed though? Which that they ask more questions? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, curiously, one of the two groups that wouldn't talk gave the view that yes they had asked more questions but you can take a half full and half empty version of that so let's start with a half empty version which is they asked more questions because they'd made a commitment to delivering a result by a certain date they didn't think they wanted to do it therefore they asked more questions to kick the can down the road mm -hmm. that might be the one that gets popular traction the um, half full version is that they had sent the decision to the independent oversight panel. Yeah, this is what I've heard. Yeah, they sent the decision, and I started talking about this a number of weeks ago, but they sent the decision to the independent oversight panel, mm. which normally is, is believed it should take about a week, mm. which would have tied up with it being sort of last week. And they asked a question or questions, which the Premier League didn't know the answer to, so they asked triple seven. Again, doesn't surprise me. Which doesn't surprise us. So all that considered suggests mm. that maybe what triple seven got told mid to late Feb, it's true mm. because there's a little bit of assumption we can make that suggests it's with the independent oversight panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that means if it's with the independent oversight panel, the decision has already been made, mm. which is just that we don't know what it is. Yeah. And if you think that we sat here last week 
this points deduction decision had already been made. Yeah, because we just didn't lawyers, know what it was. Because it? Yeah. it was with the lawyers. Mm. So fingers crossed that one way or another, yeah, we get a resolution. We get a resolution because that gets that monkey off our back mm. as well. Mm -hmm. It may put a different, yeah. heavier one on it, depending on oh, what the might. decision is. Whatever, yeah. um, but at least we will know. Mm -hmm. And I think what's disappointing generally is because it's fine for a Richard Masters to say, um, you know, from, you know, football without fans is nothing. Mm -hmm. But I, I would wager that the reason we didn't get this decision a week ago was more to do with the Premier League than anyone else. Absolutely. Um, 100% more to do with the Premier League. Therefore... They made Everton fans wait another week. They've been doing it vindictively. Now, maybe it would have played out slightly differently if we'd have took the decision with our tail between our legs and just got on with it. And the fans wouldn't have protested mm. and made Do you mean the approach Nottingham Forest what Forest, trying have to take? Forest have just gone, yeah, all right. We're naughty. Let's you get know, it done let quickly. Us off, right. Maybe it would have been slightly different. I imagine human nature, because I, I believe from different people, I've, this has never been confirmed, but you hear things. Masters is fuming. With Actually, what? With Evan. Hate Evan. Oh, does he? This, the fans and stuff, because of the, because he's been highlighted, obviously. They've they've put a big torch on the, the, mm. the inept uh, job that he is doing. Well, if, if what Everton fans are saying and or doing mm. is in any way wrong... Mm and can be proven to be wrong, i.e. factually, mm. then we'd happily hear, read it out loud, wouldn't we? Mm. That's wrong because, mm. that's wrong because, but he, that's but wrong because. what I'm saying is he hasn't, like human nature would, what would you, if, if everyone's going after you, you would naturally go, because that's just human nature. You don't go, oh, you know what? I don't blame the Evertonians for calling me corrupt well, or saying I do this. Football or... managers decide to personally dislike footballers and not pick them, right, as really, a consequence. Yeah, exactly, right. Yeah. So why shouldn't Richard Masters say, I bloody hate them ever, yeah. fans? So, right? they, so therefore, but, that's, but he, for me, is where the vindictive. But he should have £2 million a year of professionalism that says that does not impact... Human nature. Managers should. Yeah, I know. Don't. I know. Human and I nature. Here is someone in the mm. past mm. who has been able to exercise that professionalism, yeah, but that's a... and, and lots of people do exercise it every single day. And lots don't. Well, I know, but the ones who don't are wrong, right? Well, that's and... he would. Well, whatever. He ne wouldn't sit here and admit it, but I'm saying it's no. I'm sure nature. he wouldn't. It's human nature to go. Use then. Oh yeah. Let's make life very difficult for you, Chelsea. Don't forget. We're allowed to have their thing kicked down the road. They can down the road mm. because Todd Bowley just took over. So let you get your feet under the desk. I've before. never heard that. I heard you saying that before. Because yeah. it was out. It's out there. Yeah. The, well, the I, reason why I don't Chelsea. Consume the reason why yeah. Chelsea have been. I think Giving it's a bit because of it's a new ownership. That sounds like crap briefing from the Premier League. To be honest, doesn't well, it? Well, whatever it is. So if Everton would have had triple seven passed in December, would it not have been for triple seven to go? There's nothing under our thing, Gov. We're going to get all this sorted for you, so therefore give us some time. Give us, give us some time. But the Premier League didn't want that. And that's why now I feel, and I, I do, I'm like you, I think it's with the, the people. To, it's basically... Oversight panel. They can't even... They can't say no, by the way, the oversight panel. No, no, sorry, they, they don't it's change... A, they, they just make sure everything They don't ready. change the decision. Yeah. They just make sure that the right mm. process has been... So followed. therefore, I imagine by the end of the week... We'll know one way or the we'll other. We'll know one way or well, the some other. some fancy journalists will get told. And they, this yeah. Um, and therefore, there'll be people can draw a line under that, and we have to move forward from there. I mean, this will be news today and tomorrow, and then maybe someone will move on to the mm -hmm. ownership issue. So we're on the eight-year anniversary yeah, of happy Farad. Birthday, Farad. Yeah. Nice yeah. one, Farad. Superb since he's come in. Out quite as he hoped. Not turned out how I hoped, mate. Yeah, I was dancing in the studio. I think when he took over, thinking. This is all we needed. We yeah. just needed. We had yeah. a good side. I mean, don't go back and look at the team we had when he took over because you will cry when you look at what we sit and watch now. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's fair to say he's absolutely balls the whole thing up. And I think I'm on the being, fence there, aren't you? I'm sitting on the fence. I think I could have probably been a little bit more clearer. And my, I got told off by my dad for him. Um, for swearing a bit too much lately. I did, I did say the pressure was getting to me a bit. So I will refrain from saying what I want to say and what I would say when the cameras aren't on. Um, but I will use the same message. I just won't use the same language. But he's cocked it up. And I don't think 
if you would have put it in the hands of two diehard copites, they could have done a worse job. I really not unless think. it was deliberate. No, I mean deliberately trying to do a worse job. I don't think they could have done a you worse reckon? job. Honestly, from you look at the team when he took over Farhad, we had Romelu Lukaku, John Stones, Delafeu, McCarthy, Barry Baines, Coleman, Jack Yelka, mm. Tim Howard. Yeah, just um, and I'm Kevin Morales. We had players who all walk into our team, like moonwalk into our team. Right Do you know now. what people say right hang now? On, hang oh, on. I'm sorry, mate. I thought so you're done. They come out, they, you take that over, and there's a big pile of money there. And because, likely, or whatever you like Bill Cannon, they said, or hated Bill Cannon, whatever, the club was ready to spend money because it hadn't really been spent the money. There was a small amount of debt, re- relatively speaking. And also, PSR was a thing, but it wasn't a thing because, again, Another me, the way I've seen this play out, I refuse to believe nobody's breached in the 10 years either. But hey ho, let's put, park that for a minute. That team was ready to pop. Good manager, get a good manager. They didn't, mm. they went and chose somebody who shouldn't have even been near our football club. <laughs> and there was a big pot of money. And really, I look at what they did across the park. If Everton could have got a Jürgen Klopp at that time, Everton could have popped and been winning trophies, Champions League and all that because they had a big pile of money and they all had, they had a core of mm. really good players. And since then, the eight years, I, I, if you'd have sat me down when it was announced he'd taken over and said, in eight years, me and you'll be doing a show where Everton are facing relegation. They've already had They're points deducted and they might be getting more points deducted and they can't spend a penny and You've got this player and that player, and there's no pace in the team. And blah, 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 and 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 I would have gone, John, go and sit down in a dark room and breathe. It was, um, you're right. I mean, I remember vividly when I heard this because mm. I was on, um, what's the bloody place where the park is on the Mersey by the festival gardens? Festival gardens, yeah. No, no, Otterspool. You, Otterspool. The, yeah. So I was walking along the river at Otterspool when mm. phone rang. Mm. And it was um, Phil Kirkbride. Remember him, people? Yeah, used to work for the Echo. Right, yeah. And I went, what's he ringing me for? Mm. And he goes on the phone, and he naturally assumes I know. Yeah, of course. So he's saying, oh, I didn't see this coming. Said, what? This? I didn't think that. Was... Mate, you're going to have to tell me what it is. Because you were chairman of the Sheryl. I was, yeah. And, and so it came out of the blue. Mm. But um, Farhad turned out to be more Viv Nicholson, didn't he? You know, spend, 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 you know, mm. um, and, and so on. I mean, it's in the judgment there about what he expected, which was three or four years of really heavy spending. At that point, you have an on field success. And, well, basically the city model, really. Yeah. You course. get to the point where you're winning things, you're finishing out the table consistently. So you get more. You're in the yeah. Champions League, you're getting money. And if you like, the you owner's income down. has yeah, to yeah. come down. Um, and I, I, I like, I say sometimes, particularly we're talking about bloggists. I've done two blogs in my bloody life, right? Mm. One way was how fans could own the stadium. The other one was about Romelu. Because what yeah, Romelu yeah. wanted to see was some sign that we were serious. Mm. And I did a blog and it, again, it will be this eight years old, presumably, mm. or ish, seven years old, where I basically said, pay him 250 grand a week. Imagine Everton paying a player £250,000 a week six, seven years ago. Mm. We'd have thought that was madness, wouldn't we? Yeah. But if I kept him here for three years and it's cheaper than replacing him because of the amortisation of transfer mm. fees, it would have been an absolute bargain. Mm. Could you then imagine finishing higher up the league? So we're going to do a revision of history now, aren't we? But you then go to a short step that says we are doing what you just said. Mm. We are going up the league. We are tantalisingly close to Champions League. So John Stone signs a new contract, mm. right? A bit like Branthwaite did last summer, whenever it was, thinking, I, I'm young, I can be here another year or two. Mm. Romelu was young, mm. right? You've got those two rock-solid icons in your team. Mm. And as you said, you've got all these other players around it. Mm. And you suddenly and Ross think Barkley, Ross would never have gone anywhere else. No. You know, probably he wishes. Go anyway. I was going to say probably wishes he hadn't. Right. Um, and before you know it, you're thinking, actually, it's it's the dream we always had. Mm. Right. And without the need for because our base would have been higher than cities, course, for example, yeah. without the needs for allegedly cooking the books and all that mm. sort of stuff, because we'd have had organic growth. Mm. The stadium event would have happened sooner. Mm. Okay, maybe um, 
a little silver on, on the cloud is that we've ended up with a site that we perhaps wouldn't have ended up God, with yeah, and, yeah. and so, so forth. So it, it, you just couldn't screw it up more mm. than it's been screwed up. But if you look at the lackadaisical, absent-minded approach to decision-making, mm. all of that would have been made less impactful from a negative point of view if the leadership had been any good. Mm. Yeah. Because what we need to remember is that the behavior of, say, Bill Kenrice as the chair with his manager or managers as they became was when if you're objective about it and draw a line in the sand, you say, pre Mashiri, we're a well run football club. Mm. Well, we were, weren't we? Okay. We, we, we got had no money, but we, we got we good value from yeah. the money that we spent. Mm. And they alleged, all we need is that billionaire mm. to bring the money that we can kick on mm. and that's what we all expected wasn't it yeah and 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 yet it's also true isn't that that in later years people would use phrases like anyone but bill kenwright would do better than this mm -hmm. you know and, and and as time has elapsed and the passing of him i suppose and stuff like that then it all becomes focused the spotlight as one individual who was just a bit too absent-minded had too much money disposable income mm. from his dividends Mm. pouring regularly out of USM yeah. so that he could pee a couple of hundred million pound up the wall every year and not and still his net it worth matter. his net worth mm. would still increase. Yeah. And then he logically moved and we could perhaps if we looked back at it, we could probably figure out when he did it, from I'm putting a huge amount of focus in making the squad better to I'm putting all my focus into building a football stadium. Mm. And so his original plan would have been three or four years of heavy spending to mm. get the team sorted out and then move on to closing out the stadium. And, and that, in many respects, that's what he's done. But that would have been But the fine. three or four years of spending didn't produce no. a good team. No, right? because he so. chose wrong. He didn't put a proper leadership group in. He, didn't, he should have stripped the board immediately. Mm. Immediately and put his own people in. I don't know why he didn't. It's crazy. It's it, beyond belief. You know, we got brands in and then didn't give listen. Him, didn't listen to him. So that was against everything well he played fantasy football didn't he mm -hmm. played fantasy football I mean, and and there's a lot of um people out there who are um significant contributors mm -hmm. to to the malaise we find ourselves in simply because they got his ear mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah, yeah and yeah. none of those people but oh, sorry a, a good chunk of those people never ever worked for the club <laughs> never ever were close to the club but they somehow got into the got ear of this owner flesh, yeah. yeah and and then you've got a, you know a revolving door of managers Mm. who found the job far bigger than they could imagine it was. We needed to go and get a Jürgen Klopp. We needed someone who, and I know it's difficult, they don't come around very often, which is why he's one of the, the top two managers in world football, mm. and he's proved that, and he's still proving it right now at Liverpool. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. unbelievable. He's unbelievable. The legend yeah. fuels itself then eventually, when you've earned the right. But he was incredible at no, Dortmund. You, you earned the right. I liked him at Dortmund, and yeah, I, I have to yeah. say, I, don't, I like him a lot less at Liverpool, of course. Because it's Liverpool. <laughs> because he, it's Liverpool. I think he was like strong. again when he goes somewhere With well, United, they must be, they're the ones who must be kicking themselves, because he wanted the United job, yeah. and they were on an R and over him, and went for, for some reason, ended up with Marino when he could have had him. But Extraordinary. Anyway. That's it. Because don't forget, Jose Marino was coming to Everton. Of course. In 2016 until United took him. Yeah. You know, and who knows what... That, was the, Hollywood, that an, was the Hollywood manager. Well, that was it. Wanted, and it might yeah. have been an unmitigated yeah. disaster, Jose, but it might not have been because we had good players and he's a far better manager than Cumans ever been mm. and ever would be. But uh, someone like Jürgen Klopp coming into Everton Football Club at that time with those players mm. and the money... He would have come. You've seen what he did with the academy. Went in and said, "What's the point of this? If you aren't producing players for the football club, me. and we're not producing players to sell to fund yourself, we may as well scrap it. Mm. And we'll just have a reserve team, and we'll have some kids and ex pros, and we'll you know, buy everyone, and pros, and we'll spend money. Mm. But he, that wasn't what he wanted no. because he was using the German model. If you've ever watched the coach." Which is a it's ten years older documentary now, but it's in German. It's incredible. But look at German. Dortmund's engine. For, well, they've done it, and they, they've had a little bit of a slowdown, but still do very well for what they do. But only like Brentford money. and Bright will get a slowdown mm. because others get wise to of them. Of course, yeah. You know. But Everton could have been doing that. Yeah. But what Everton, what Machiri should have done was stop taking shortcuts. There so, are no shortcuts. So we tried with Cumin. There are no shortcuts. And it didn't work. That's right. Tushil wanted it, and he, did, he was obsessed with Marco Silva. Listen, Marco's a good coach, but was he really a coach you wanted to hang your hat on at that time? 
Don't forget, he started Even today. now you wouldn't? No, he's... I, listen, I really like Marco. I he's, do. He's probably one who... Him and Allardyce probably have been cut down probably before they should have been. Yeah. And, and, and just for clarification, I didn't like Sam Allardyce. I had the football. was was dreadful. But he finished eighth and he won games of footy. Mm. I would suggest Everton wouldn't have ever flirted with relegation with Sam Allardyce no. in charge. But that's by the by. But... 2017, Tushel was available and wanted the job, mm. was interested. And Mashiri should have gone cap in hand to him because he, all right, he's, a, he's tough. You have to, it's hard work. You have to buy into him. But then Everton were in a great position to buy into him because yeah. we weren't Chelsea. We weren't PSG. That's right. We're not buying. We were, at, we were at a time where we had hard working players and we had good players. Mm. But we had the pot of money and it would have been you do this and you get better. But Everton should have been looking around for who, mm. who, can we get who is a tra- and I know in all fairness to Mashiri, he wanted Marino, United took him. He wanted Emery and Monchi. They went elsewhere. But they wouldn't let him go. Mm-hmm. And then Arsenal took Emery, didn't mm-hmm. he? And they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't let Sevilla wouldn't let Monchi come. Yeah. And he went a year later in the end. Um they popped up a filler and Villa are doing all right at the yeah, minute. Yeah. But he should have been scouring Europe going, who is a winner? Who has done something at their club? That's remarkable because, like I said, I really like Marco, but he started off great with Watford till we lifted our skirts up a little bit. And then he won one game in 10 and got sacked. Mm. And that should have been a bit of an alarm bell for Mishiri to go, oh, hang on. And one of those games, we were 2-0 down and with 25 minutes left with a crap team and beat them 3 Not with a crap team, but playing crap and beat them 3-2 when we couldn't win any game. Mm. Um and he done that wrong, and then he, like you said, he kept sacking managers. When you add up the accumulation cost of what it's, it's huge, got, it must be a hundred million. Yeah, we've wasted on just getting managers out the door. You know, it's got some, to be. Hasn't someone it? could do a, a story out there, couldn't they? Could say this is how much it must have cost. You know, and, and particularly when the, the the managers who bring large backroom staffs with them, because mm. you've got to pay all them off as of well. Of course, yeah. Um, and he even made it. Listen, and Carlo, clearly, Carlo was fantastic. Our frequency of getting rid of managers means that in our nineteen point five million losses, we'll be getting rid of managers. Carlo, yeah. If you could have took him in twenty sixteen with that team and the money, would have been one hundred percent the correct mm. decision. Yeah. If you could have took him in the summer of twenty eighteen, still with money mm, and true. with the players, it'd have been fantastic. But in twenty nineteen. It probably should have been Moyes when he wanted it mm-hmm. because we were already starting to slow down. That's right. We, we were already going, well, we're going to build this stadium now. And Because after that, 2019, the summer of 2020 when Carlo was the manager was the last time Everton spent any money mm-hmm. without bringing a considerable amount in. Yes, true. We spent £60 million pound on Decore, uh, Ben Godfrey, Alan. Mm. And obviously we had Hammers on a, a free, yeah, but yeah. he was two hundred grand a week, so we went, you know, it was ten million a year. After that, every penny we've spent really we've brought back in anyway. That's true. Um our graph shows that. Well, exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's that's for me, he made poor decisions management wise, but his biggest, biggest, biggest error was he should have changed that board. He should have gone bump off your old pop, new CEO. New board in there, six or seven strong, mm. gone big and gone, this is my football club now. Or I've put this board in charge of the football. Never this, because it's always ours, but, you know, whatever. And gone forward it's from It's so there. easy to do it right, mate. Uh, and even if he did, even, you know what, John? He, and I don't know why you would do but even Sorry, if he... it's so much easier yeah, to do it right. But even if he'd have gone, say, like 2018, if he'd have gone... This isn't going pause. how I want it Press to be. Pause. Right now, I'm. Let's doing have it. a think of this. I, I, no disrespect to to Denise Barra Baxendale, but being the chairwoman of the of the Mothers of Wavertree to so the next minute running Everton in the community, even though we know Karina Duffy basically ran it and she was just the glorified head at the top, to becoming the deputy CEO of a of Premier a League Premier League, League football, football, to becoming the CEO. Of a Premier League football club. I find that ridiculous. I, I would have understood it if it was still Bill Kenwright's small thing and we haven't got any money and we're promoting with it. And I'm not against promoting within if people are outstanding. But I think at the CEO level, it's a huge, huge task to drive a football club forward. And I think that's where he made the mistake for me. He should have gone, 
I'm getting a top class one in because I'm burning money anyway. So I may as well go and try and See, people would say to me, and they've done mm. it in recent times as well, mm. particularly when you're talking about potential future owners of the mm. football club, you know, and you know, you meet a Don, a Don Dransfield or somebody, mm -hmm. or you meet whoever, whoever, whoever. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And so anyone who works in industry or in business for any length of time, I mm. mean, properly, yeah, yeah. right? I can meet you for an hour mm. and just chat over a coffee. Of course, right? yeah. And then you, he, oh, Ned can say, so what do you think of that Barry Cass bloke? Mm. Would he be good as our chief executive mm. or what? And you can say in that hour, yes or no, mm. okay? Or someone can be, send me your CV. Mm without your name on it yeah yeah and say would this person be a good candidate does this fit the criteria the executive maybe? of Everton football club mm. and you think to yourself what well, it's like we talk about Thelwell right and mm. you know his how he searches for players players with certain attributes players of a certain age this mm. that and the other and then you you, you do the desk exercise you, you know you get someone like the Pivs company or whoever it is who does that sort of stuff for mm. you and says you've asked for a right-sided midfield player mm. below the below the age of 23 who's going to cost you less than 10 million quid who's over six foot tall mm. and really really fast i think everton's filter's broken on the search the fast i think it's broken it yeah, doesn't they, exist they leave it's the been deleted yeah yeah and and then you get a third party consultant who's got all the data mm. yeah, and yeah, they yeah, convert yeah. into insight for you yeah. and they say here you go mm. yeah yeah here's six mm. And then you go off and decide which one of the six you're going to buy, right? Yeah. The same applies with a chief executive. You can get a search firm. We're looking for... I was going to say, yeah, could yeah, we get... We're looking could we have for a chief that? executive of a football club who should have this sort of background. Mm. And you say, here's the background which is mandatory. Mandatory item number one. They've run a business before. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be a football business, but, they, you know, and it needs to be a relatively small business. It needs to be mm. one where they're, you know, a, a player... You know, player manager, not that they're just sitting at an ivory tower, you know, directing people. But none of that seems to have been done. None of it. I want to pause. Dave, you're massively wrong about Everton being a well ran club prior to Machiri. We had to sell Arteta for 10 million to pay a 10 million Barclays line of credit to keep us out of administration. Yeah, but we were rel what we said was we were relatively well run. Yeah, in comparison to Machiri's time. We were relatively well run, weren't we? That's just a fact. Mm. The fact. It, it, we didn't say we were perfect because we weren't. I was. I remember fuming at the time. Not so much with Arteta. He, Arteta shafted us. I've said this before. Totally. Massively shafted Everton. Big time. If you know? only there'd been a webcam over the fax machine. Well, exactly. As he's <laughs> you know, insisting he's going. Yeah. The day after saying he was staying. And then he anyway, wrote history with his little... Well, exactly. Listen, I've done my bit for the I've club. I've moved on. Yeah, I've moved well, on. Well, you have to with them though. But uh, but let's let's still not... the best little Spaniard we knew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let's not lose sight of it. Arteta shafted us. All these things are relative at the though. time. But the players and they, they've got a small a short career. And they want to do whatever. The fair play. Um, but Everton were well run considering we didn't have money to spend. Mm. We were in a big income club. We're still True. not now. We didn't. Bill Ken and I didn't have money to to dip into his pocket. So from that aspect, Dave, we were a well-run club. Yeah, sometimes you'll have to sell, but we've just had to sell Richarlison. So things haven't, you know, happened. Liverpool had been a well-run club for a number of years. They were still 34 minutes away from administration. True. So Manchester United, if, you know, if the Glazers said, right, we're whatever, they're a bit 1.2 billion in debt, United. Ratcliffe's just come in, but if Ratcliffe went, I ain't paying them debtors off, and they all come for them. United to go out of business, but you would still go. They're still probably a well-run club because they chain over so much money. Mm. So I think, to be honest, Everton were all right considering we were competing at the top end of the Premier League, which we were for most years when Moyes come in without spending any real money. Can you know when you look at it mm. like that? Didn't mean we didn't have a couple of years where we were. Listen, it's been sign a play for two years. Yeah, exactly. You're so. not a well run football club if you select a manager, mm. right? And then before the manager puts a wet signature on a contract, you realise he's the wrong guy. Yeah. And yeah. you go through and with it anyway. It, yeah, which is what we did. And, and now that's an interesting one because that's the lovey dovey impact. Yeah. Mm. You know, that's an input coming from the chairman, mm. which is the fans really want this manager, <laughs> even if we're not sure. Mm. We need to get him anyway because yeah. they love him, right? And lots of fans did like the name called Koeman of as course, being the manager. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 
and he, 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 it looked like he'd done a half decent job at Southampton, mm. but that was the only reference point. Yeah, yeah. So if you spin back to your objectivity, mm. and that's the problem with make, doing objective decision making, mm. it might not give you the intuitive answer that you want. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. And you can, as you, we've talked about it many times. You, if you can do that for players, you can do that mm. for your chief exec. You can do that for all, for your other the key roles and mm. say, if they don't have this experience, it's unlikely that they're going to be the right person for us, mm. right? But you might see a future chief exec who's not ready now and you bring them on board anyway mm. because you could have succession planning as well. Because every time we pick the chief exec since year dot, if you think about it, wine has walked away. So Johnny on the spot got it, mm. Elston. Mm. Elston probably got the, the curly finger that said, mate, your time here is numbered. So yeah. if you don't jump, mate, you're going to get pushed. Yeah, so, he was getting to you. So Jenny on the spot gets it. Mm. Baxendale, mm. she walks off in a huff because she can't take the heat mm. either. And bless him, Colin Chong is the only person around mm. who, well, actually there was two, him and Richard Kenyon, I guess, who could take on the role. Mm. And the less vocal of the two <laughs> probably got the I mean, less vocal with Denise probably got the job, right? So you end up, we're talking about 10 or 15 years of chief execs, none of whom have competitively won the job. Mm. Crazy. It's crazy. G Max says the second charge will bring a minimum of a four point deduction, so it won't. I don't know where he gets. No, I don't know where from. you're getting that yeah. from, mate. It's it'll be if they get more points, it'll be two points because that's the only way they can break it down. The only reference to minimum in 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 the judgments is six. Mm. So I don't know where four comes. So from. it's either six, but it'll be two. Uh, Plot and Forest will get at least six, so we will actually be better off. Um, Plucky planned it. Panda says El Bobble says we're getting the same silk, but yeah, but that's that was out anyway. It was reported yesterday, that wasn't it's it? Not rocket science as yeah. well, but fair play, yeah, to, yeah, absolutely. Uh, to the Bobble if he's because he must have heard it, and that's good. But it was out there yesterday that they were getting the second, they were getting them back again. Um, it's good that he's available, but we're not getting mm. we're not doing ours what till April. Mm. It's yeah. a bit mad, isn't it? Um, Rich Bond said, it wasn't Rich, it was Rod rather, said, uh, has this story about the New York Yankees guy wanting to buy us got any legs? No. I don't, I wouldn't know, mate, but I, I'm not going to change to my, imi my, uh, sorry, my image, my opinion. If there was really anyone waiting to buy Everton, we'd know about it. Yep. And there isn't all of this, the hiding in the shadows, wait, it's nonsense, honestly, because anyone, like John said, if this fell through, then people might come out and go... There'll be lots of interest. Oh, more sharks oh, will yeah. come out and go, oh, all right, let's have a go with this then. That's why it's really dangerous for, for uh, people, in my view anyway, mm. it's interesting what your view is, to, to, to almost get themselves into a... I don't know whether emotional is the right phrase, but an emotional state that almost says anyone but triple seven, anyone mm. but them because there's a lot of sharks out there. Mm. And this football club, if when Triple Seven are told yes, no, let's say it's no, there'll be lots of interest of picking up mm. an undervalued Premier League football club. Yeah. And you know, but, if, but if the people who want to buy it are those, let's just say they're Glazer types, mm. they can see an opportunity, they don't intend to use their own money, they just believe they can run this football club fiscally better than the current ownership have. That doesn't necessarily tick the boxes for us fans, mm. which is why it's fascinating, or it would be fascinating to understand what criteria, because we're talking about criteria, aren't we? Mm. What criteria Farhad Mashiri has used for determining who he's going to sell his shares to. Because I don't have an issue, it's, it's a bit brutal, this, him selling his shares to whoever he wants, mm. i.e. whoever pays him most money for them. Mm. I do have an issue, him claiming it's good for the club, Without us knowing we don't know, why yeah. it's good, why for, it's the good club. for us, yeah. yeah and if yeah, the, yeah. part of the answer is they've proven to him at least, whoever they are, in this case, Triple Seven, they can run the club better. They've got the funding to, to, to satisfy its obligations for the next three years mm. and can clear away some of the debts with his help. Then it's curious why we would then turn that into anyone but them. Because whoever comes along instead of surely has to tick at least those boxes. We've got to, yeah. Yeah. Well, that, well, so you would have thought. You anyway. know, a gaggle of business guys who are small millionaires getting together is no better, is it, potentially, than a small billionaire who doesn't know what he's doing. I just need someone who does know what they're doing. And that's the key. 
so you're right and i've said it more than once if, if people are serious you've got a great opportunity which might be slammed shut by the end of the week in the sense that if triple seven get told yes and if they don't say um if they get told no mm -hmm. then anyone who's serious who claims to have been in the shadows has mm -hmm. missed first mover opportunity yeah because there will be others then. See, if you're really serious, you wouldn't have been waiting. No, no, you, you get in you there. You match it up. You, you provide a viable mm. alternative. You don't have to show your draws, do you? But you have to show that you exist. Mm. You know, I mean, just a simple statement from be a consortium or whatever saying, we believe we fully satisfy the Premier League's obligations. We would expect to pass the fit and proper owners test without mm. any difficulty whatsoever. And we've got the money to fund Everton for the next three years. Mm. Here we are. Yeah, of course. And there'll be huge pressure then it's on, known where... on Mashiri minimally mm. to meet with these people. Other people let it be known, didn't they? With United and things oh, like gosh, that. Gosh, yeah. Um, Corey says uh, six more points around the corner. It's quite obvious. Rules are now set. They can't go against that. The only chance is they class Everton breaches as one, but it doesn't sound like it. Well, it does sound like it because that's what the KC said yesterday. You can't count twice. He still could because they might just go, well, we'll ignore what the last KC said, but then when Everton go to appeal appeal on that, it'll then you're going for a fourth set. So we're going to really go through. For, and Everton will be like, well, we got told. It's, My, it's a minefield. I, I would suggest, you know, and some of these guys do listen, so you never know. Mm. You might hear it, mate. Um, I would suggest that the Premier League's objective for our second charge should be that we don't appeal it. Yeah, it should be. It should be. Because it gets, it's better for them if they, if Forrest yeah. go, yeah, we'll take that and there's no appeal. And Everton go, yeah, we'll take that because then... And then the decks are cleared it's for the rest of the season. For the rest of the season. Yeah. The minute you start going into appeals, it's dragging it out again, isn't it? Um, I think if Forrest got six points, they won't appeal it. No, there's no way for us, Will. Um, Dave says, lads, I don't mind plays having to be sold to balance the books. It's the fact that the line of credit was from day one. Oh, sorry, was from day to day. Admin of the club, we'd have gone bankrupt. And Ravon says, we were that well run under Ken Knight that in 2011. He told the Blue Union in that infamous interview, he begged the banks not to come. Yeah, you're not listening. We're not saying Everton were well run. We're saying they were relative, we, l relatively well run since then in compared the finances and compared to what we've done now yeah, absolutely that is what we're saying we had players we still bought players most seasons we had two years when we didn't and that was well we documented we must have been doing something right we were always near the top so we were yeah. in some respects we were well run mate me I'm not saying I've said before it's well known that I said Bill Ken Knight of the sold years and years and years and years ago totally agree and everyone was saying the same and thing and should have been his out and Mishiri should have definitely been you know haven't hung on to it that long Mishiri should have definitely been where his association with Everton ended he could have been like president over there doing whatever nice seat in the stand but he didn't but what we're saying is when you look at the both tenures we were Probably in a better, well, we were in a better situation. Have we ever, Maybe. including all the spending of Mr. Mashiri's money, I'm mm -hmm. calling him Mr. In, in, in deference to Grant Ingalls, right? He used to call him Mr. Um, and criticised me for not putting the Mr. in front. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, have we ever had a group of players since, like the one you reeled off? No. Absolutely. So, yeah, we may have been not well run because we had to sell, distress sell a particular player like Arteta, for example. Yeah. But we must have been well run to get him in the first place. <laughs> Listen, again, yeah, it's we can't all go subjective. back. We're just saying with, with that relatively small money, we, we did well. We must have done well because we were always up near the top, weren't we? That's yeah, what we're yeah, saying. Yeah. Like, well, when I say the top, I mean like the top eight. We were always in and around the top eight, really. Come on, the eighth anniversary is up. Which is a huge disappointment. Mm. We all thought, say, okay, I won't put words in people's mouths. I thought mm. that the restriction we had, which was we were very short of cash in the sense that the owner didn't have the capacity, the owners, because don't forget, mm. there was to others but the owners didn't have sufficient funds of their own to invest in the business and that was where the ceiling came from wasn't it mm -hmm. Moyes and, and, and Ken Wright trying to work as a double act could only take us so far yeah, yeah, and then yeah. over the hill on a big white horse came a guy with billions to spare mm -hmm. and more importantly a commitment to spend a big chunk of it mm -hmm. and from then on it went downhill yeah 
Um, which is sad, hence Viv Nic- Nicholson. There's ben definitely ben. not been an offer of 1.1 billion to stabilise Everton Football Club. There just hasn't. If this is the weekend stuff. It's all based on the Philippe Eau Claire article where Philippe himself says it's been misunderstood what he said. Mm. I'd be made up if there was. I've Sheikh Yazi Yassim or whatever his name is. He wanted to buy United them. I was like, I've got five billion. I'll prove it. I'll go and buy go and get him. Dead. Go and get him right now. I'll I'll give Jim made Radcliffe up for a bloody it. nose. It's yeah. not happening, is it? Yeah. It's not happening. Um uh, Dave says, What do you guys think of Colin Chong's situation running the club as CEO and the stadium company? Sorry? What do you think of Colin still being the CEO, but also running the stadium? Well, he's clearly not a CEO, doesn't want to be the CEO, and we should have a different CEO, <laughs> yeah, yeah, one yeah. with experience. But there's no one to make decisions. Because tomorrow, mm-hmm. it's always tomorrow, the ownership mm-hmm. might, stroke, will change. Yeah, which is why we need a decision out of the Premier League. Mm. It's fine and dandy for people to say, oh, Mashiri should pull out of the agreement when people don't know mm. what the agreement is. Mm. And Triple Seven surely deserve the right after 150 million plus of, you know, you know, emergency funding and all the time they've waited for at least the Premier League to have the courtesy to say yes or no. Mm. And if they say no, fine. Mm. I won't be happy because we've wasted time because they've taken so long to say no. Oh, sure, yeah, if they yeah. say yes, Triple Seven will be absolutely over the moon, presumably, because it, you know, because it gives credi- credentials and credibility to Triple Seven Football Group. Mm. And then we have to see whether they can walk the talk. But right now, we don't know either of those. It's mm. madness, um, complete madness. Rich has said that if you've breached the latest period, the last year must have been forty million, and therefore the trend is going back up. Wouldn't that count against you? It should should count against us. Well, it depends it, what what it is that's made us go up. Well, it will count, won't it? It'll count against us. That's why we're mm. back in. But, but that's where that, mitigation comes in. So then, the mitigation of we've you we've already been done for years one and two of of, of the three year cycle means you won't get well. It means you shouldn't get done again because there's no way of getting out of years one and two is there when you're in this cycle. We've already been punished for it. How why are you getting punished for it mm. again? If that makes sense. Mm. If it was a case of that's gone now because you've been punished for it. And then you're on the next three-year cycle and you fail it again. Absolutely, you should probably get done even worse, I would suggest, because you're not learning. But you can't rob a Mars bar and then go in and they, they still do you for the Mars bar, even though you've been punished The 2023 for it. PSR, well, we said it before, didn't mm-hmm. we? But the 2023 PSR, and the guy who's asking it is right, um, the PSR accountable losses must be 40-ish million because, as we said before, 55 and 10 65 and the and the threshold is 105. But don't forget, um, we don't know the scale of the breach. We, you know, we, we just don't know. But if the judgment is carried forward, and this is something which may or may not take happen in the coming weeks, I suppose, surely there's an argument that we actually haven't breached in real in objective terms. As long as we're below 105. Because the judgment is, as you say, T minus one and T minus two should not be included mm-hmm. because we've just been punished for them. Mm-hmm. Like to race through these uh, premier comments. Um, ho hum. We're eight, all experts. Eight now. years of all talk, no trousers, says Benjamin. <laughs> uh, Peter says, eight years of instability, never witnessed so many managers coming and going. That's extraordinary. Embarrassing yeah. is the last eight years, correct? Uh, James says, Usman, I've mentioned in the findings yesterday, if the Ukraine war didn't happen and he came in, could we have still ran this PSR charge? Feels like without gigantic sponsorship, which would have been scrutinised by the Premier League, the failure to meet PSR was always going to happen because of the mismanagement. No. No, because we would have had... When you look at how can United get £600 million for a training kit and sponsorship? So we would have been able to keep increasing the sponsorship and that wouldn't have been a big hole in our budget. Their plan, right, was mm-hmm. for um, Alicia Osmanov to become a minority shareholder, mm-hmm. maybe 25%. If that was done by diluting mm-hmm. the shareholding of Farhad Mishir, in other words, through a share placement, mm-hmm. then the, the, the income from him, him being 
Usmanov would have gone to the football club. Yeah. So yeah. in simple terms, if you at that, in that moment the football club was valued at 100 million, 400 million pounds, mm. and Alicia Usmanov took 25 percent, then the football club would just get a cash injection of 100 million pounds mm. right there. Right, and then um, and that sorts out any yeah, losses. Later, and then right? his company, and mm. you would. This is the curiosity. Mm. You would do his um, stadium naming rights prior to him becoming a significant shareholder because you don't want a related party challenge, mm. right? So you do the the um, the naming rights thing first, and that would have put a cash injection of what, 275 million was mm -hmm. it? Which would presumably have landed inside the stadium development company, mm -hmm. which means that would be flush with cash, right? Mm -hmm. And therefore the borrowings that have actually got us into the mess in the first place wouldn't have occurred, would they? No. Nope. So it's just all about timing. Mm. Uh, which and, is classic and, heaven. And both of those could have become significant mitigations if they'd got wet signatures on pieces of paper. Mm. A heads of terms, for example, on one or both of them would have probably satisfied these judges we've been talking about in, in, in the last numbers of months. But that's the... And, that's and, and so, and all, all, yeah, all that wraps up in bad planning, bad management, bad decision-making, and ultimately as well, bad communication. Mm. All the things we've been saying for quite a long time need to be put right. Mm. Um, well, uh, Kev Rex says, eight years of an absolute crap show. Machiri has been an unmitigated disaster, and the sooner we're shut of them, the better. Uh, really open the room of other investors other than Triple Seven is true. And yeah, I, I don't see it, Kev. I honestly don't see these other people, it's easy to go to these people waiting. Well, where are they? I believe it when I see it. And I haven't seen anything. I haven't heard anything other than throwaway comments by people who've got skin in the game. These people who are waiting are likely to be as bad, if you want to say triple seven are bad, or worse than triple seven. They're going to be the same kind of people. And see, people it, say, I think it's dangerous when you just yeah. read people who've quite clearly got agendas against yeah. and, and pick off any, like John said, anyone other than these. Let's be honest, the, the, the water's worse swimming in now is full of sharks, isn't it? It's no one's there going. There's no Evertonian there, is there, who's a multi-billionaire going. Like Jim Ratcliffe, you mean? Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. What Everton need, and this is the reality, Everton need a billionaire who genuinely wants to make Everton the best. Now, you might say, well, that was far. That's, but I don't believe it because you don't yeah. leave any stone it's unturned. United fan. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So he might have thought, well, I can make this better and it'll make me some money, whatever, yeah. right? Or I can go, I own this. That's one. a viable reason as well. We need, in my opinion, the thing what I will be most comfortable with, but they're not out there, but is a Jim Ratcliffe type Everton. A very, or, very wealthy Everton. Or someone who... Say it was Tim Cale had some rich Qatari mates who were billionaires and he kept having me and he was like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's then. go and bloody the nose of the Premier League. Let's go and make Everton. The, and they had a determination to go, we're going to make Everton the very best. We're coming for Liverpool in that city. We're coming for the, the Man Premier City League. thing. Right? And yeah. they come in and they're determined. Look what City have done. Put the parked 115 charges <laughs> over there for, for a now. minute. But they come in the and the fans go, are happy. We're making this. <laughs> We're buying this. Finch Farm's going to get a state-of-the-art, whatever. We're making this better. We're putting this, these things in place. We're making Everton the number one, and we won't rest till we do. And they start evidencing it by great staff coming in, and you know, because you get the feel early on where the things are really changing, and they've got the money to back it up. Then you could get really excited. Everton aren't in them waters. Everton are in the waters of needing someone mm. to come in and take over. And I would suggest anybody with a plan will make this better. Yeah, I agree. Than what it currently is. Is that right? Are triple seven right for Everton? I've no clue. But I certainly wouldn't be reading articles from a couple of people and, and making my decision on it. There could be other people well better, but where are they? If you are there and you're a billionaire and you see the opportunity for this football club, you would let it you would let it be known. You wouldn't be hiding in I don't think so anyway. That's just my and this is obviously only my opinion. Kane says why the football club lying again? Do they ever learn? Lying Objectively misleading is lying. Just like they've lied to the fan base. Not in legal terms, it's not. Um 
It's fundamentally different in legal terms. He says a statement on Friday, this is March, said the club strongly contests the allegation of non-compliance and together with its independent team of experts is ex- entirely confident it remains compliant. That was in March 23. Um, and hard questions need to be asked when they accepted minus six points yesterday. Why they accepted? Well, they had to, they had to, didn't they? I think. I don't think there was anywhere else to there go. There's the next stage to go to, but... Is there? Yeah. Oh, okay. They well, could do, but they know. won't because they've issued a statement saying mm. they're satisfied. So. But the Premier League, the, the, didn't the didn't the findings say Everton didn't lie? No, they didn't lie. Mm. Yeah. The findings Everton, said that the yeah, commission Everton said Everton did didn't lie. lie. The, so. It's a very legal thing. The mm. difference between, if you will, not telling the truth and lying. Mm. Yeah. Like Manchester City, for example, are choosing not to give information to the Premier League, aren't they? Mm. Well, that's a bit like lying as well, isn't it? Mm. But you do it that way. Uh, right, on a race, because we... Uh, I think way, just an observation yeah, about yeah. the six-point thing. I, I, when I was speaking last night to somebody, I was, the analogy I was using that, um, we've got the same silk going the second time. Mm. And in a sporting sense, let's use the example, we've just played the away leg of a game mm. and we've got an away goal. Yeah. And the next case is the home leg. So in other words, he's playing the long game, I mm. think, because the overall outcome may be that we end up with a lower point deduction than if we behave differently. <laughs> Do you get my drift? Yeah. Part of it, if we've really spooked the Premier League and you say Masters himself is fuming, mm-hmm. if we've really spooked them mm-hmm. and they, if you will, their form of defense is to attack, then the situation needs to calm down. Someone has to be the grown-up in the room Mm. and say, how can we get to a mutually beneficial outcome? Mm. Mm. And maybe, just maybe, that the mutually beneficial outcome as as its first commitment on our side, not to challenge six points being a minimum, Mm. when that's what Richard Masters wants it to be. And what's the quid quo pro on that? Mm. That we don't get done the second time. Mm. With the points deduction, I mean. Yeah. Maybe we get a sanction, but hey-ho. Uh, Steve see. Kelly says, all right, lads, hope you both Hi, well. Steve, mate. Eight years of poor decisions by this joker. He was relying on his mates helping him. He's been an utter disgrace in the last 18 months. Well, he was getting 300 million a year in dividends, so actually mm. he could rely on his own money to pour down the drain. But when that tap got turned off, that's it. Isn't it? Uh, Richard says, worst billionaire accountant ever. Does he even have an accounting qualification? Typical yes, Everton does. to be the first to get done when we have the wealthiest accountants at the helm. Did he learn nothing from the Russian oligarchs? Stewart says, eight years, steady decline. Sure, his intentions were good and he's delivered a world-class stadium, but he's not been patient enough with managers and has shattered the fans' morale. Jake says, should Dobbin and Chimiti have had more game time? Because what if they, you know, what they, they don't to justify? Yeah, they haven't. If they, I imagine. Well, I imagine. I don't know, mate. I do. I know. I don't know what they're like in training. And do I mean? Timothy got sent off for kicking a ball away last night on a booking. So there you That's go. Frustration, though, isn't it? Yeah, but he scored two and they were winning. Yeah. He should have been buzzing. Uh, Gareth says very emotional. Ten days health wise, nearly died. Oh wow! Being very ill. But started the long journey to recovery. Will be months, but wishes, better mate. than the alternative. Yeah. I felt ill, but rather than go to doctors, I was self-medicating for what I thought was gout and tonsillitis. But it wasn't. It was a serious infection called Group D, streptococcus, that can seep into the blood wow. and organs, which can kill you, which mine had. If my missus hadn't rang 999 against my wishes when she did, I'd be dead. Five surgeries so far, Jesus. And going to need several more surgeries starting tomorrow. And Salford Royal will be my home for a while. My missus can literally call herself a lifesaver. Two things, do not self-diagnose and the NHS staff are amazing. Get well soon, Gareth. Yeah. Obviously, no Gareth from the the Premier Nights. Yeah, I support that. Um, Look after yourself. Take it easy, mate. Don't do it yourself. Do what doctors Mm, say. Do exactly what they say, mate. Uh, Jez says Christ you madman glad you have recovery in sight and make sure you listen to your wife moving forward spot on um, Jez says I still think we need an explanation how the six points are deemed appropriate and those minutes that Dicky Masters has refused to share from this judgement mm. and, and I think I replied to Dom King earlier on about it um, it's becoming part of the statute just they they being the legal people involved have concluded that 
um, a PSR breach equals a sporting advantage, which in turn means a points deduction. And they've decided with no fact really mm. uh, to support it that six points is the minimum. Mm. So it's there is no evidence to support it. The only evidence is we just got six points <laughs> deducted. Mm. And that'll become the reference point for future cases. But you're right, no point looking, mate, for any explanation as to how it's, it is what it is. Um, a part of the referencing is what clubs in the EFL have ended up with, notably Sheffield Wednesday, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the profession. So maybe Rick Parry made it up. Yeah. Quite possibly. Yeah. I mean, he's not exactly great either, is he? No. He just Parry. looks good alongside Masters. Yeah. Who wouldn't? This year Masters is the, the duff, isn't he? He's the one who's, you know, he's the one that's going to make you look good. Peter Principal. Um, oh, hey, oh, that is life. Uh, Ned Schliebe says it's very this possible. Ned, no. The one eating an apple. So it's very possible triple seven are being used as a conduit <laughs> for Usman off machinery to remain in charge and invest money. Seen a few things on Twitter. Say. Well, it is always, oh, listen, it is always possible. Of course it is. Who knows? Um, da, 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 uh, Adam says, if example, the next points deduction was 10 points using that logic, Baz, would the club appeal if they got another two points? I don't think they would. If Forrest got six, say, and Everton got two, I don't think Everton would appeal. No, I don't think Everton would appeal. I think Everton points. would go, yeah, all right. They, 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 must we'll have, they must have, as part of their planning... A view that says, how many points are we prepared to take without going to appeal? Yeah. Um, the guy says, if there was ever a case, you'd be careful what you wish for. It was Mashiri, his abdication of responsibility by leaving Ken Knight and his frankly incompetent board in place is the downside of his legacy. The upside of his legacy is, of course, the new stadium. Absolutely. Uh, Russell, his first lineup when he took over the Chelsea game in the FA Cup was... Mashiri, Robles in goal, Coleman, Jack Yelka, Funes, Mori Baines, uh, James McCarthy, Gareth Barry, Aaron Lennon, Ross Barkley, Tom Cleverley, Romelu Lukaku, Everton Subs, John Stones, Aruna Kone, Nias, Bezic, Delafeu, Osman and Howard. Wasn't it hugely wonderful, was it? Some... There were some good players there. there really His first Premier there, League there. season that he was in charge was Stecklenberg in goal, Holgate, Jack Yelka, Funes, Mori, James McCarthy, Idrissa Garnet Gate, Gareth Barry, Leighton Baines, Ross Barkley, Gerard Delafeu, Kevin Morales. And on the bench, Kone, Lennon, Cleverly, Robles, Oviedo, Davis and Galloway. Rom, of course, was injured. Yeah, He come back the week later at West Brom when we mm. won 2-1. Yeah. But if you think of that squad and then you There's a core money, there. That's the point. There's then a core there. It shouldn't take much to make that team all right. Um, Brian, he, he wouldn't come for an interview, mate. No chance. Uh, Evan that? Viking, invite Masters for an interview. <laughs> Carlo did improve a lot of players. Don't care what anyone says. It didn't work out how it should. But I reckon if we would have had fans, we'd have coasted into Europe. Yeah. And my series being a disaster, the says Premier League corrupt slide. Um, the Tyler, I the late Everton's second case, the EFL. I've got its own rules, UEFA has got its own rules. The Premier League doesn't have to apply. The, the commission doesn't have to apply those rules. That's basically what he says. Benjamin says, What does Colin Chong do? I prefer Cheech and Chong. And Rob says, I used to like Simon Jordan, but today's my one off. Went over by 300 million. He's a, he's a clown, Simon Jordan. Sadly, I used to like him. He's turned into that blur that they wanted, which is piss everyone off. So people phone up and phone up. Yeah. And he, he's, for a fella who put Crystal Palace in 10 minutes from administration or in administration and nearly went out of business, he really should keep his mouth shut. Right, we're going. We, In fact, stay where you are, because me and John will be on more than the game in 10 minutes. We might do a bit more on this, if you're lucky. <laughs> See you in a minute. 